Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Project Management Practical Examples from Industry Practitioners webinar. My name is Shafika, and I will be your MC for today. Today's event is co-organized by Singapore Polytechnic and Project Management Institute, Singapore Chapter. Project management, management is a transferable skill that you can learn and practice in almost every domain. This afternoon, two of our SP alumni will share how they became successful project managers in their respective industries and how PMP certifications gave them an edge after they graduated from Singapore Polytechnic. Let me first introduce to you our speakers for today. Firstly, we have Mr. Lai Jinjie, a PMP and former student from Business Administration who moved on to major in Economics before working at ZGG Private Limited and now works at Dashin Engineering and Construction Private Limited as an Operations Manager. Let's invite him to give an introduction to project management in Singapore's construction industry. Mr. Lai, please. Okay, hi everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Okay, uh, so I'm a SP alumni, and uh, today I'll be introducing you to the project management in Singapore's construction industry. So a little bit about myself. <clears throat> I, I'm a PMP, and I'm currently working as an operations manager in Dashin Engineering and Construction Private Limited. So I'm a specialist in the trade of uh, facade, aluminum and glass, as well as stainless steel. Uh, throughout my years of working, I've also done uh, steel structure works, architecture works, waterproofing and fire protection. So mainly I work as a subcon specialist in the construction industry. For my education background, I came from Singapore Poly. I graduated in the year 2007 from business administration, major in marketing. After I finished my NS, I went on to NUS to study economics and graduated in the year 2012. After my studies, I joined the construction industry. So I started off as a project manager, assistant project manager, then I moved my way up and now I'm currently as an operation manager in Dashin. So let me share with you some of my past projects. <laughs> so these are some of my past projects that I've done. So um, the first one is actually Amazon Warehouse. These are some iconic projects. The second one, uh, if you've all been to Badok Jetty, you will see that um, there's this expansion joint, metal strips. You'll see some metal strips on the floor. Those are all done by me. Then in the school of uh, NUS, I've done some buildings or the glass, glass work. And the last two projects is actually quite meaningful for me. The first one is a micron semiconductor. It's a project value at $5 million. And that was actually my first project in, in my career. <laughs> then the last one is Pfizer. That was my last project in uh, before I move on to a new company. So there is some closure to my career in my previous company. So currently what I'm doing in Dashin, my current projects are Changi Airport Terminal 2 which has recently just opened. I hope you all have the chance to go there. So if you have the chance to go there, all the glass railings are done by my company and uh, all the cladding works, internal cladding works are also done by us. This is a project uh, value at about $10 million. Then we are also doing a Singapore Land Tower, Marina Bay, Marina One, renovation works and uh, Orchard Boulevard Hotel. Yeah. So uh, if you look at my education background, you will see that it's actually quite different from 
what I'm doing right now. So I would like to introduce you to this thing called accidental project manager, which I myself is one. So these are people like myself who find themselves working as project manager without ever applying. Somehow fate has it that we end up here. So uh, let's say for example, uh, the pyramid, Great Pyramid of Giza, the Great Wall of China. Back in the days when they were building these superstructures, there's no such role as a project manager. But actually, there's, there will be someone who is working in the role of it, but he, he himself doesn't even know it, that he's working as a project manager. So for myself, uh, what happened was I joined the, after finishing studying, after graduating from NUS, I didn't know what I want to do. So I've been applying for some company that is actually near my house. That's how I ended up in the construction industry because the first company who accepted me was a construction company. Then I was in the office for a few months. And what happened was uh, all the project managers left the company. So all of a sudden there's a shortage of project manager and the boss asked if I, I'm keen to try the role. So I took the opportunity and I, I find that actually the role suits me. So that's how I end up as an accidental project manager. Okay, so coming from this kind of background, I feel that in the construction industry, the value is more on the technical skills. But for myself, actually, technical skills I pick up over the years. It's not so hard to pick up technical skills. But the industry is actually lacking in project management training. So the project managers in our industry are mostly from an engineering background. So they are all engineers. But project management skills is actually very important as well. Uh, there should be a balance between these two for the project to run smoothly. For myself, I graduate from a uh, background in economics and business administration. So I think during my poly time, we had some management training, which was good for me. And then over the years, as I progress through my career, I pick up the technical skills. Then I find that uh, I need to learn some project management skills, which then brings me to PMI, to the PMP certification. So let me talk a bit about uh, PMI. So I know of PMI for a very long time. Even before, during my studies, I've heard of this uh, organization, but I never really looked into it until I joined the industry and I feel that I need the training. That's the time when I went in to become a member and start studying about it. So the PMI, actually gives you a very good project management framework. And it is a globally recognized certification, which is very good to have in your career. Then as a member, the benefits are we get to download all their books. We can self read up and upgrade ourselves. There's a variety of webinar, live web webinars for you to to see and learn from. And there's a very good co online community who will be willing to help you with any difficulty that you pose. Then there's also our local chapter, which are the volunteer for the Singapore chapter, uh, which provides us with a project uh, professional development courses, uh, mentorship programs, and uh, the annual symposium that 
we can get to enjoy. So there's a lot of benefits in uh, joining. So uh, let me give a brief introduction to the project management framework of uh, PMI. So for myself working in the construction industry, uh, we are mainly doing the traditional waterfall style of project management, which uh, PMs are, PMI's framework is, uh, I feel, very holistic in this manner. So the most important thing in waterfall is the iron triangle of project management. So uh, cost, quality, cost, scope, and time. Managing these three will help you to manage the project smoothly. Then the framework is broken down into process groups from initiation to planning to execution, monitoring and controlling and closing, which is the part of the package that you have to study to take the PMP certification. So in this aspect, it actually helped me a lot in my career as a project manager. So for PMI, the process groups and processes are actually very well organized, very well grouped. We don't need to memorize everything. We just use what is needed at a specific point of time in the project. This is what actually helped me during my work. So most of the time we are actually in uh, monitoring and <laughs> controlling of the project. So at this point, um, we can refer to the process groups and the processes, and they will tell you exactly the tools that you need to actually handle certain situation that very often come up. Then uh, in PMI's framework, there's this uh, earned value management, which is very well received in my industry. So it actually gives you a very good overview of the budgetary of the project, which is something that you will need to report to the top management of the company. Then it also teaches you very good uh, data analysis tools, quantitative and qualitative analysis, like the PERT, like the simple distribution that you can use to analyze certain situations that you come across. So those are the hard skills that you learn as a PM. But what is important nowadays is a uh, soft skills and this is something that is not easily trained the industry is changing they are going more digital the workforce is also changing there are younger gen generations joining the workforce older generations leaving the workforce and the makeup of the workforce is also changing with a uh, talents from different countries joining. So it's a very multicultural industry. So soft skills is important to, for you to navigate in this kind of environment. It's actually very highly valued, but it's not something that you can get a certificate or get an education on. Technical skills, on the other hand, can be easily picked up. But soft skills is not so easy, it's a human communication. So uh, just now I was talking about the mentorship program. So I myself is also in the program as a mentee. Then my mentor actually taught me uh, servant leadership about winning the hearts and minds of our co-workers 
in order for the project to move smoothly. The post-pandemic work environment is also very um, unclear right now with uh, workers demanding uh, higher wages, with uh, talent retention, with retaining your best uh, workers. So soft skills is something that PMI is also looking into right now. More PMIs are, from what I see, I, I don't speak for PMI, but from what I see, PMI's curriculum is uh, trending more towards soft skills, which I agree, and is uh, much needed. So the role of a project manager in the construction industry, you have to have technical skills. You need to be able to talk to the engineers, the architect. You have to have a safety mindset, which is very important. Then you need to control your schedule and budget. So these are some of the things that uh, I've been doing. Uh, the first picture you can see, um, this is in the airport. We are actually doing a steel structure staircase for the airport is now done. Then uh, time to time, actually on a monthly basis, we have to give a safety presentation to our workers. And we have to do schedule and present to the client. But I feel that uh, being a project manager in a, in the construction industry is actually very fun for me. There's a lot of problem solving. You will have to solve technical engineering problems with your fellow other trade project managers. Finishing the project will give you a sense of satisfaction that you cannot get anywhere else. It is something very tangible. You can see the building itself from a raw building to a fully completed structure. You get to lead a bunch of uh, professional engineers and workers to build tangible stuff. And you get to meet a lot of people. So over the years of working in the industry, I've met uh, people from Bangladesh, India, Iran, Philippines, all over the world. It's a very mix of uh, multiracial industry. You get to know a lot of cultures, different cultures, different habits of different people. And you get to make lifelong friends that you can take along. So that is all for me. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Vivian Poon, PMP in CSM and former student from Manufacturing and Engineering who moved on to study the same field in Lowborough University of Technology, UK. She is currently a PMO Program Manager at a US medical device company. Let's invite her to share about project management challenges and potential opportunities in the medical device industry during and post-COVID season. Ms. Vivian, please. Thank you, Shatika. Um, very good afternoon to everyone. I'm Vivian Poon, a voluntary uh, academic advisor of the uh, PMO Singapore Chapter Academic Outreach Team and a PMO Program Manager with a US medical device company. So today, uh, allow me to bring you on a short journey through the challenges and potential opportunities in the medical device industry during and after COVID season. First, I would like to do a short introduction about myself. 
let's touch on my education background first. I am a diploma graduate from Singapore Poly's uh, Mechanical and Manufacturing Department. Um, thereafter, I went on to pursue my studies in uh, Loughborough uh, University of Technology in the UK for two years and successfully obtained my degree in manufacturing management. Next, let's take a look at my past working experience. Upon graduation from Loughborough University, I secured my first job as a process engineer with Chartered Silicon Partners, now known as Global Foundry Silicon Partners, which is one of the world's uh, leading semiconductor manufacturer. Thereafter, I pivoted uh, to the medical device industry and worked for uh, companies such as BD, uh, Beckton Dickinson, and Thermo Fisher Scientific. In various roles such as uh, R&D engineer, regional IP liaison, and uh, project manager. After accumulating a couple of years of working experience in my role as a project manager in some medical device companies, I went on to join my current company's uh, global PMO team as their program manager. This role opened the door for me to manage global projects and pick up new project management skills along the way. During the course of my work in this uh, medical device companies, I managed to get myself certified as a project management uh, professional, PMP, and as a certified Scrum Master, CSM. This presentation is structured into, two, uh, into five main sections. In the first section, we'll look at the key responsibilities of a project manager in the medical device industry. In the second section, we'll briefly go through the examples of design control processes for both hardware and software projects in the medical device industry. In the third section, I will talk about the key project management challenges uh, project managers are facing uh, during COVID season, where some countries are still in lockdown mode, and also uh, the challenges uh, they, are, they will be facing after COVID season has ended. In the fourth section, I will highlight the potential opportunities that we can all explore in the technology, people, and supply chain areas. Last but not least, in the fifth section, I will share some of the benefits that I have, I have personally derived from being a PMP certified uh, program and project manager. This will be followed by a Q&A session to address the uh, questions that you have for both uh, speakers. Right. Next slide. Okay. Uh, before we start looking at the key responsibilities of project manager in the medical device industry, uh, let's take one minute to gather your views on what uh, these responsibilities are. There are no right or wrong answers. Just furnish your views in the uh, Q&A uh, feature uh, on your Zoom panel. I'm Lai Ahmed. Product supply to market on time to meet uh, patient needs. All right, well, that's one of them. Okay. Uh, Hi, Jaffa. Yeah, I'm sure that oh, okay. Uh, co components arrive in time. Hey, thanks, Jaffa. Okay. Uh, safety. Yes, Bernard. Costing, budgeting, scheduling, coordinating. Okay, budget and time frame. Yes, uh, Sweden. Thanks for your uh answer. Uh, produce medical devices required for the current market. Yes, we do have the uh. This is one of the answers. Okay, to oversee the department. Yes for our governance, managing the order and delivery for uh, medical devices, yes, logistics, timeline, very important, uh, react to an unprecedented event, yes, these are actually uh, to measure the risks okay, involved uh, in advance before uh, the actual uh, uh, situation actually happens, okay, uh, managing the resource of time, yes, uh, project planning, execution, monitoring, okay, I think we have one whole list here, uh, QA, Managing Healthcare Regulatory Aspects. Thank you, uh, uh, Du Mindu. Okay. Uh, past testing, no disrupt disruption in delivery, Melissa. Okay, I think, yeah, all the answers here are um, correct. Okay, all right. So uh, you guys have, uh, well, uh, done your homework, actually. All right, so uh, maybe I will just give you a, a consolidated uh, list of uh, what. Okay, uh, of uh, what uh, the key responsibilities of project management uh, managers are. 
okay, in the medical device industry. Firstly, okay, uh, we, you know, uh, we need to establish the project charter and project milestones, define the project scope, goals, and deliverables. Uh, next. Define the project tasks and uh, resource requirements. Okay, I saw some, a lot of you actually uh, answering that. Developing the project plan and establishing the uh, design history file. Okay, yes, I think I, I saw one of the answers also covering the project plan. Okay, number four, uh, managing project plan, uh, budget and resource allocation. Yes, this is one. Uh, this uh, I can find this a lot amongst uh, the a lot of you answering. Uh, you know, this, giving this answer in the uh, chat just now. Okay, uh, number five, providing direction and support to project team. Uh, number six, please. Monitoring and reporting on progress of the project to all stakeholders. Okay. Planting and managing project changes and interventions to achieve project targets. Okay. All right. Uh, and also capturing, uh, analyzing, documenting, and sharing lessons learned over the course of the project during project closure phase. This is a very, very important, uh, to me, I, I find that uh, this is a very, very important step that some um, project managers uh, do not actually, uh, uh, or, or they, they totally skip it. But uh, for me, I, I find that it's a very important uh, step that I, I usually uh, go through uh, during project closure, uh, closure phase, uh, phase. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's go on to the next slide. So uh, I will just briefly cover uh, the... Uh, Uh, this slide uh, on the uh, design control uh, process examples. All right. Uh, so for the medical device industry, so I think just now I think Lai actually covered uh, the waterfall model in the construction industry, but this is how a uh, uh, typical uh, waterfall model looks like in the medical device industry. Uh, I plucked it from uh, uh, the uh, FDA website. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, I, I, I can't pluck it from any companies because of some copyright issues. So uh, just pluck it from a generic website. But this is how, you know, it actually basically explains how a medical device uh, design control process looks like. Okay, we have the product development uh, portion. We have the usability uh, engineering portion, which is the human factors portion, the technology development portion, the quality management, the regulatory support, and also the manufacturing activities. So all these actually uh, has to go through uh, the different phase gates, okay? Um, some companies, uh, they have, not all phase gates are actually, uh, you know, similar for um, all companies. Uh, they may differ uh, from company to company based on their uh, project management practices or project uh, governance uh, framework, all right? So uh, next slide, please. This is the uh, infamous, uh, uh, v model uh, for uh, medical device software management, uh, which uh, currently I think uh, not many of us are actually uh, practicing as because uh, I think we are now uh, moving towards uh, a, a more agile model, which is the iterative uh, uh, model. Uh, next slide, please. Right. Okay. So, what are these? Uh, what What is this agile model about? Okay. It's talking about you know getting the requirements. Uh, going into your design uh, phase, develop uh, your, your, your idea, okay, test it, deploy the, uh, the, the, the uh, what you call the wife, uh, the, the, the uh, deploy the, uh, uh, the first, uh, what you call, uh, wireframe to the, uh, to the customer and get their buy-in, okay, uh, during a review period. But if there are some further inputs, then we will have to go revisit the design uh, site design development and also the test and deployment uh, stage again. Okay, so this is how an agile, agile model works until, okay, it will be in an iterative process until, okay, uh, you know, uh, the customer actually buys in, okay, uh, during the design review stage and uh, the, uh, pro the software is actually uh, launched. All right, so uh, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, with this slide, uh, I'll highlight some of the challenges uh, project managers face during COVID season. All right, it's, uh, I think we have had a very tough uh, two years uh, with us. Okay, so, um, but um, we, we do face some challenges as project managers. Uh, 
uh, to be honest. So, um, okay. All right. Uh, so in terms of human resource, okay. Uh, difficulty, there's a difficulty in uh, scheduling meetings uh, as 90 to 95% of companies' workforce are working from home, okay, due to COVID restrictions imposed by uh, the government. Okay, government in this case could be uh, from uh, different uh, jurisdictions, uh, as some of my project team members uh, are actually based, uh, you know, in, in different uh, locations around the world. Okay, uh, next one, please. Communication, okay. There's a lack of face-to-face uh, -face communication due to uh, COVID restrictions uh, and uh, unfamiliarity with uh, online uh, Video conferencing and file sharing tools such as Zoom and MS Teams. I I have a I I have to actually uh you know put my hand up. I had difficulty actually uh custom uh familiarizing with uh, all these uh, features in uh, uh MS Teams especially there there. But once I actually get myself uh over it, I find that it's a very useful uh tool. All right uh to to actually uh, conduct your team meetings virtually. Okay, and then uh. We we'll have the uh, poor broadband network speeds, okay, uh, which I think uh, is very unsparing because uh, when everyone jumps onto, uh, you know, uh, during the COVID season, everyone just jump onto, uh, you know, uh, their 4G or 5G networks and that's it, you know, uh, the, the entire network actually, uh, you know, gets a jam up and you get uh, intermittent or even disrupted uh, uh, meetings, all right? So next one. Okay, on supply chain. Wow, this one is a... Very, very tough one. <laughs> okay, so uh, there are delays in shipment of raw materials and parts from vendors, okay, uh, all over the world. Higher manufacturing and shipment costs from vendor to fast, uh, for the fast turnaround of existing uh, production backlogs. Okay, they demand uh, more, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, they, they demand more from you, okay, uh, basically saying that, hey, I, I have other backlogs to clear. So in, in order to prioritize yours, I have to uh, get, uh, you know, I need more money from you, okay? So basically, you just check up your project costs, all right? Uh, regulatory, okay. Okay, uh, long review and uh, approval cycles from regulatory bodies globally due to backlogs caused by COVID lockdowns around the world. So even the regulators, they are also hit by, uh, you know, uh, COVID, you know, they are all working from home. And some of the things, uh, they need uh, a lot of alignment, all right, and uh, so uh, basically with uh, the lockdown, it's difficult to actually uh, get uh, alignment, uh, you know, uh, through Teams meeting. Some of this uh, needs actually documented evidence, face-to-face uh, -face documented uh, evidence uh, discussions uh, between the regulators before they can actually decide on the path forward, the regulatory path forward, all right. So, uh, yep, this, is, uh, this basically documents the... Uh, uh, during COVID uh, scenario. Okay. I wouldn't say that we are in the post-COVID season now because I think uh, looking at the numbers, although I think it has peaked uh, two weeks ago, but uh, I'm still keep, I mean, all of us are keeping our fingers crossed definitely that, you know, uh, no new variants are coming in, you know, and, uh, you know, well, uh, hoping that everything will be fine. But in any case, okay. Uh, I will just highlight some of the challenges uh, for uh, the post-COVID season, okay? Human resource-wise, okay? Uh, there is still, uh, okay, another challenge, okay, which is a uh, difficulty in getting all team members in one room due to hybrid working arrangements, all right? Um, so I think hybrid, some of the team members, uh, they have uh, what we call two, three days, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we call, um, uh, uh, two, three days working from home arrangements and then uh, in another two or three days, you know, back in, in the office, that kind of thing. So it's hard to get everybody uh, in the same room, okay? Uh, so you have to actually uh, be able to accommodate, uh, you know, uh, a hybrid approach that is uh, some guys actually lock it from, uh, you know, uh, uh, through your internet and then some guys actually uh, have the meeting, you know, in the room, okay? So uh, concurrently. And due to high staff turnover uh, post-COVID season, I think a lot of people had a lot of, uh, uh, have been thinking very hard, you know, on what they, they, they want from life. So some departments are actually stretching their existing headcount in uh, several projects uh, while hiring a replacement. All right. So this is a very, very prevalent uh, challenge. Okay. Uh, 
So now I think we'll go to the next step, which is the uh, communication. Okay, due to hybrid uh, working arrangements, meetings have to be arranged concurrently in person and online. All right, supply chain wise, okay, uh, we have a much higher raw material and shipment costs due to inflationary pressures caused by tensions between Ukraine and uh, Russia and China and Taiwan. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So regulatory. Longer review and approval cycles needed uh, as uh, regulatory bodies globally are still trying to clear the backlogs uh, incurred due to COVID lockdowns. Okay. So uh, next slide. Okay. Okay, in the next few slides, uh, let's take a look at the uh, potential opportunities that we can harness from technology, people, and supply chain. So under technology, we can leverage on full technological capabilities of project management platforms to facilitate remote working. Uh, we can also, next slide, uh, next, yeah. make uh, digitization and cloud collaboration the standard for all projects, okay, standardized. Okay. Revisit or develop project governance frameworks and implement or enhance project management software platforms. Okay. Lastly, source for tools with agility and scalability as the end goal in mind. Next slide. Oops. Okay, under people, okay, we can leverage on digitization and uh, cloud technologies to tap on skilled uh, talent globally, with the exception of manufacturing staff who needs to be on site, uh, who can work uh, remotely and does not need to be on site. Okay, so traveling time and cost can be significantly reduced by uh, leveraging on uh, online video conferencing and file sharing tools such as Zoom and MS Teams. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, under supply chain, okay, we can revisit uh, the uh, procurement strategy and consider whether delaying certain procurement activities like commodities, fuel, service providers, subcontractors may yield more competitive pricing. Okay, and also uh, we can uh, look at renegotiating the contracts uh, with existing vendors. Uh, factoring in the uh, post-COVID risk analysis outcome with the project team. Okay, with this, I think I'll put the uh, I'll stop my presentation. Over back to you, Sh Shafika. All right, thank you, Ms. Vivian. So before we move on to our next speaker, if you guys have any questions, we do have a Q&A button for you to input your questions there, and those questions will be answered during our Q&A session later. Next up, we have Mr. Kelvin Gunn, Regional Business Lead Asia Pacific at Project Management Institute to share a bit more about his company. Mr. Kelvin, please. Thank you. Um. Hi everyone, hope the team can, can see this. Um, so first and foremost, thank you Chin Tie. Um, thank you the team, uh, Vivian as well, and, and SP team for, for arranging for, for this very short webinar. Uh, hopefully um, you all get to witness the, the, the and learn from the experiences from, from, from these gurus and technical gurus and, and stuff. Um, so just a very quick introduction, I'm, I'm Kelvin. I'm with um, PMI as the Regional Business Development Lead. Uh, I'm also the Regional Youth Lead, um, which in this case, I work very closely with uh, um, institutions and, and schools in the region as well. So um, prior to joining PMI, I was with ACCA. So I did work very closely with um, the accountancy faculty as well, uh, with Singapore Poly. Um, and, and so it's good to come back on campus per se, and definitely nice to, to, to see everyone here. Uh, PMI 
perhaps you all, you all may have known what is PMP all about, but a lot of them may not have heard of what is Project Management Institute. It is not for profit organization. Um, so in the past, PMI did start off in the States, in Philadelphia, before uh, we started to regionalize. The, pro the, the, the primary reason why we did that is because um, different markets have different needs and similarly for different regions have also different requirements. And so coming into each of the different regions, example in Asia Pacific, we will be able to support the organizations, um, institutions, and of course, um, the individuals like yourself more to enhance in terms of your capacity, your, your competency, your technical skills. And with the Singapore chapter supporting us very, very closely, um, I think the team is definitely here in, in terms of helping you to grow. Yeah, um, Singapore Poly itself, they do have um, preparatory costs as well. And I think um, this is what the government is, or what Singapore is actually doing. And in fact, if you look at a lot of different research reports, you realize that in terms of the um, upskilling and future proofing in terms of skills, um, the gap between the gap for Singapore individuals is definitely uh, much lower as compared to the region. Of course, this also very well facilitated with um, the government funding, such as your WSG Skills Future and, and so on and so forth. The accomplishments table on the right, it basically gives a very overview of where we are since 2021. Um, we have more than 225,000 certifications earned, and these certifications can span um, not just PMP, you have your other certs, which I'll just briefly skim through. And as of today, we have close to about 680 plus thousand members, of which the chapter members are also part of it. We have also enabled over 1 million young people via the Project Management Institute Education Foundation, which is a philanthropic uh, arm of PMI. And that's where I'm also uh, representing PMI in terms of, of, of the region, yeah. So this is where we are, um, what PMI looks at looks like. Um, so PMI is a is a professional certification body. We are an exam body, and what we do is we uh, endorse us and knowledge us um, individuals with a, a a qualification which is project management. In fact, project management itself is a life skill, and everything you do, even as what the team has mentioned. Everything you do subconsciously, you are putting project management in it. You open up your wallet, you have $10. How are you going to you know, spend the $10, especially? And, and whether would you spend this and not buy your lunch or, or so and so? So, all this, I, I think, it is part of the entire thing. But having a, a, a certification itself do a credit and do support you in terms of your portfolio, in terms of your profiling, um, when you go for job interviews and, and, and employers, know that you have a skill set such as project management. So this is basically the whole charm of it, where you have the zero to three years followed by the three plus years and so on and so forth, as you move into the verticals of the career progression flow. So um, if you're interested, you can actually have a look at our website. For PMI APEC, we have close to 130,000 certifications, 60,000 members. Um, approved training partners are um, institutions that support us in training. So um, PMI, it's an exam body, as I mentioned. Um, we do have um, several online pair those who aren't able to access face-to-face -face learning. Because PMI is global, so we have regions like, let's say, your Indonesia, your Africa, your Sahara, where a lot of them would, would have to travel miles basically just to attend school. So we have these organizations there to basically to support. Um, the list of companies here and, and, and the schools here are basically just a snapshot in terms of um, how we are working with them collaboratively. Um, in, in, in the totality of things, um, definitely talent pipeline is something that we work with them. Um, how we bridge graduates and organizations coming in together to create the whole employability flow and to also enhance the project management competencies within the region. So that, that's, that's where, where, where I'm from. 
Um, if, 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 if you have time as well, um, you may want to have a read up as this. Um, this is the latest report um, that studies the 10 year employment trends uh, in terms of project management and where it is. Um, if, you, if you have heard uh, both Vivian's and Chintia's session, you know that, um, that there's a myth that mentions that project management is very IT-centric, IT but in fact, it's not. Uh, I'm gonna show you a video on that. In fact, it basically covers a very diverse portfolio of opportunities, uh, a very diverse um, uh, array of job roles, which if you are currently studying now and you're gonna graduate soon, it basically opens up in terms of what you are. In fact, if you are currently working, um, you realize that having that skill set itself would in fact allows you to more effectively manage things um, better your stakeholder management and, 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 and stuff like that that little charts the blue light blue chart is basically the retirement rates and the openings for for um, young young chaps like like, like you um, so it's happening within the region as well countries let's say in Japan where there's a higher um, um, population of, of aged people um, in countries where Korea, where the birth rates are declining. So these are the things that I'm, I'm working with the, the, the organizations there um, to basically to support um, that whole, uh, I, I won't call it replacement, it's basically to support that whole transition um, when, when there is a huge outflow of of, of um, employees out of the organization. Of course, nowadays, um, the Gen Z, the millennials, um, they, they, they do move around, um, not just for monetary rewards, but of course, um, what kind of other personal um, rewards that the company can provide to you, uh, whether are they upskilling or whether are there any um, um, potential opportunities the next job does offer. So it's a very, very um, diverse, very, very complex uh, kind of uh, variables outside. Um, the little map where you see China with 1 million, South Asia with 500,000, that basically depicts the number of uh, project management oriented uh, opportunities um, that will open up within the next um, um, X number of years. So um, it goes to show that project management is definitely here to stay. And um, it is not a dying trade in a certain way or another where, where a lot of them are saying with automation, you have software, why do you need project management? In fact, there are a lot of stuff which you can't do with uh, uh, automation where communication is, is vital, where stakeholder relationship is, is vital and understanding what happens next, predicting towards the future, how you're forecasting and how your risk management and, and that, that kind of stuff is basically all um, the, 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 the skill sets that we have. So, so to, 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 to sum up in this slide is, I think for, for all of us, or for all of you, in fact, um, it's important that you continue the whole online learning journey. Um, I was doing some reading as well before this session, and, and I realized that um, there are a lot of reports where they were mentioned in terms of the skills gap, um, what you need and, and, and where that whole, um, um, the whole gap, it's, it's, it's what companies are expecting and what individuals think they have. And, and that's, that's the mismatch. So these are some of the things that you can, you can look out for. Um, this is from the World Economic Forum, um, the latest report 2020, which is right in the smack of um, COVID-19. So as you can see that there's an increasing demand, of course, the data analytics, the AI, the big data, that is something which is everywhere right now. But if you look slightly towards the middle, you realize that project managers, um, strategic advisors, management and organization analysts, these are the ones that requires a lot of emotional, um, emotional intelligence, requires a lot of um, uh, core soft skills. If you look at this responses to shifting skills needs, um, you realize that the companies are looking to hire permanent staff with skills definitely relevant to new technologies, but also how are you able to manage the new technologies and able to identify not just from the big data, how are you able to come up with your own conclusions, provide your summation of uh, um, um, 
uh, reasonings to to the board to the management, and then after that justifying your decisions whether to move ahead or whether to 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 move laterally. So, um, please have 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 go and spend some time to to take a look at, at this. I I I I think it will be very useful, especially if um for the students uh in in this call to basically to plant um your your way forward after after the school. Um, the future is. Definitely flexible. When I mean flexible is um, you have currently stakeholders with shorter attention spans. Everything is really moving fast, especially right now we are speaking on a very um, virtual environment in the past where we are meeting face to face. You have no reasons to run away because we're going to spend 40 minutes here chatting with each other. But now with such kind of environment, the attention lifespan is, is very short. You need to be able to deliver what you want to do within the very short five to 10 to 15 minutes. Um, competing demands on their time is definitely something which is very common. In fact, working from home, if you look at the newspapers and, and stuff like that, you realize that a lot of them are really working past midnight and it's just to justify that they're working. And, and so the, the whole line between rest and work has been grayed out or in fact it has really merged together so um, if you're working with partners in, in the other countries as well um, then that, that makes things worse where where you really have to accede to their requests perhaps to to, to see when they are when they are available whether it's in the US or whether it's in the UK um, the geopolitical, social political situations um, as what the team has mentioned earlier on your Ukraine um, the inflation, that, that whole kind of stuff, is it's it's not making things easy. So um, it is basically goes to show how things have changed. And if you look at the two triangles up there, the left triangle is basically the, the it's called the PMI talent triangle. In the past, this is what we we this is what builds our foundation. You have the technical knowledge, you have the strategic, the business part of it, and of course, as a project manager. Uh, product or even program manager, you need to lead the team. But we have shifted over to the right side. So we have converted the triangle based on our new um, 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 surveys, research and stuff where we plan this on, on our exams. You have your ways of working. Ways of working as what the team has also shared. You may have the waterfall, you may be agile, you may adopt different kinds of strategies to achieve your targets. The business acumen is definitely very important itself because um, you really need to understand what's happening around. And, and that itself, it's, it's whether it's in, in Singapore or whether it's amongst the other countries. And of course, the power skills. Power skills are your hard skill, are your soft skills, your, your soft skills are your communication, um, your, your EQ, your IQ, that, that, that kind of level. Yeah. So I'm going to share this video so perhaps the team can, can, can see as well. This will be the top 50 projects that were voted um, in 2021. So if you look at the different kinds of projects, it's not just pure data or IT.
So everything you see here is a project on its own and all of this requires a project manager. So, so once again, I'd like to debunk the myth where project managers are essential just in a certain industry. In fact, it's not. It's basically, it covers quite a good extensive in terms of all the industries. Um, Chuntia have, have, have spoken on this in terms of your skill sets, the softer ones where you have your, your, your communications, um, the organization and leadership skills where you, where, you, where you grow and you enhance through experience. Um, people skills as well, your social skills. Um, harder nowadays, especially with a virtual kind of uh, environment, but definitely something that you have to keep and definitely have to hone it so that when you do meet up with that person face to face, you have only that short moment in time to basically to establish that very robust and very solid foundation. But other than that, the budgeting, scheduling, um, the risk management, these are things that also requires both your the softer part of it and also the harder part in terms of how you access it and how you can apply the knowledge into that to fit correctly. Um, if you've not got a chance to visit here, um, please do. Um, uh, I've always used um, the WSG skill framework in, 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 in my presentations because um, this is quite good. It is very detailed in terms of the on-demand kind of um, skill sets that you need to have in order to do something. For project management, for project management, because it's very unlike, let's say your accountancy and audit, which I previously was in, uh, where it's very um, uh, uh, focused. You need to, be, in order to become an auditor, you need to, to do that and stuff like that. So project management is, in fact, is, is peppered into a lot of, lot of organizations, a lot, a lot of industries, a lot of uh, uh, different job roles. And once you, regardless of which industries you're in, with that competency, it will be easier definitely for you to, to move up, whether vertically or horizontally, because you have a good grasp in terms of what is happening around you. So um, do have a look at the Skills Future website. Um, and uh, I think they also have an upcoming, they also have a quarterly report, if not annual report in terms of the upcoming uh, industries and stuff like that. So I think it's very, very useful for the team here. Um, regional youth, I do work with um, youth and I send youth organization is one of them. Um, I've inked an MOU with, with AYO. Um, primarily is to support the youth um, in particularly in the other markets like your know, Indonesia, your know, Cambodia, um, Laos, Burma, that the kind of areas where a lot of students, um, even the young professionals don't really have as much exposure as, as what um, Singaporeans have. They don't have access to online learning, um, paid online learning or sponsored online learning. Um, a huge percentage, even though Asia Pacific has the largest youth uh, as compared to the world, um, but a good majority of them are still in the, the rural side of it, the informal employment side of it, which is the agriculture, the rural part. So uh, one of my key role is to, uh, to, to work on this MOU um, to establish um, remote mentorships and as well as uh, internship programs. Internship program has been very prevalent in, in Singapore and, um, and, and basically it is embedded into your, your final year of, of poly year three or year four. Yeah. Um, um, and, and it's a capstone as well. Um, so, so what my, my, my role is basically to, to see how best I can link these people up or link these students up to, to companies regionally so that we have that Whole, inter whole, whole virtual internship, which I think some of the companies are already doing, like your Google and, 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 and stuff like that. So it's basically to give more opportunities and also remote mentorship program. We are going to offer um, the platform for our Singaporean kids to, to, to have the experience in terms of grooming and nurturing a child or a, a, a young children or a teenager um, who has not seen the world and, and basically to help the person to to succeed. So it, it's a bigger scope of things, but that, that, that is, is, is basically what I do. Um, so I, I've been um, in this kind of organizations and corporates as well. So I think 2023 is something that um, 
I, I will put in, uh, I, will, I will spend more time on, yeah. Um, this is another video. Um, it's, it's basically celebrating um, PMI's uh, 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 top 50 honorary. So perhaps you, you have a look at it. And then what I'll do is I'll just um, share some of our uh, uh, um, uh, candidates within the region just for you to take a look. I think projects are really all about change. Why would you go into business if you're not going to build a business to progress society? We just want to give clean, sustainable, local food uh, to as many people as possible. What if there were an even better way to clean the oceans? The current project I'm on is JPSS, which is the Joint Polar Satellite System. A series of weather satellites that we use to not only help to predict weather patterns, but also monitor and track natural We have more than 350 girls connected. They can be software developers or analysts or QAs or everything they want. There was literally nothing women could do in the 19th century. Nothing. They couldn't do anything. We can't save the world by playing by the rules because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change. So PMI is more than just a professional set. I think we are definitely way ahead in terms of um, other qualifications, in terms of giving back to the society, being more sustainable, um, listening to, to the voices, and, and, and moving ourselves, uh, progressing ahead. So as I mentioned, this is a snapshot in terms of uh, some of the um, Asia Pacific honorees that we have. So what happens is every year, um, students or or young professionals around the world, they will um, submit in terms of, of the credits and the things that they did. And that's where they will be selected as the top 50 to be honored. So I've highlighted Regine Chan because she's a Singaporean. Um, and if you look at her, her very quick overview in terms of things, I think she's very impressive as, as, a, as a Gen Z co-founder. Um, so feel free to, to do a Google for her, with her as well. Yeah, but if you look at the rest of the other, like Bofro, uh, Mizuki, Nathaniel, um, they're all from different kinds of, of environment and, and it's, it's the up and coming kind of uh, 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 trends. So with that, I'm going to end off. Yeah, so um, happy to take on any questions um, later. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Kelvin. Now, I can see that some of you have quite a few questions to ask. So let's move on to our Q&A session. To moderate today's Q&A session, we have Mr. Po Cheng Boon, Academic Outreach Advisor, Volunteer at Project Management Institute, Singapore Chapter. I will now pass this session over to Mr. Po. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for staying until right now. So um, thank you for all your questions. Uh, they are all very, very good questions. So I'm going to address them uh, one at a time. So my name is Po, uh, that's Po Ching Boon. So I'm also an XP alumni. So I graduated from Singapore Polytechnic in 1990. So that is a good, almost 30 years back. When I was studying here, the MRT has not stopped at Dover yet. So it's a long walk to the Polytechnic. So let's start off with um, question seven. So what is question seven? How do people from other industries go into the project management industry and what will be the some of the challenges faced? So uh, perhaps Lai would like to share with us. Okay, uh, so I think this question is uh, very similar to what I have experienced. So coming into a, from a different industry as a project manager, the challenges will be um, the technical. First, you need to be open to learning the technical skills required for the job. Then um, you need to know the in and outs of uh, 
the industry, the environment, in your office and in the work workplace. So it's very similar to what my experience. Pick up the technical skills along the way and manage the work. Thank you very much, Lai. So uh, the next question, uh, what are the key challenges of a uh, project management? So this is a very, um, quite a very general question. Perhaps I'll ask uh, Vivian to address this question. What will be the key challenges for project management? Okay, oh, I cannot start sharing my screen. Uh, has my screen sharing for you? Okay, all right, thanks. Okay. Let me share my screen. I think uh, in one, in two of my slides, I actually address uh, this. Um, yeah. Okay, I actually address, I, I, I actually address uh, this uh, question. Okay, uh, so um, basically I think uh, these are the uh, general ones. Of course, there are other, uh, what you call, um, uh, factors that are actually affecting or challenges that actually uh, uh, affecting the uh, project management, uh, uh, what we call um, the way we manage a project uh, during the COVID season. All right, so I'm uh, so I'm not quite sure if this question actually applies to uh, uh, post COVID season as well. So, um, but over here in this slide, okay, I actually address the same uh, concerns. Okay, the major concerns. Okay, uh, but in a post COVID uh, context. So. Um, I hope uh, I have addressed your question uh, for, yeah, in this case, okay. Thank, Thank you very you much, much, Vivian, for sharing okay. this. So um, for question, how do you manage your team when there are so many things that you have to consider? So you have your different stakeholders and all these things. So uh, perhaps uh, will Lai want, because uh, Lai works with many, many different project teams, perhaps he wants to share with him his experiences in how he deals with all the different team members. Okay, for um, many things to consider and plan, okay, I think the most important thing is to learn how to delegate the work. As a project manager, you must learn to delegate out the tasks and trust in your team to execute properly. You just have to monitor. You still have to monitor and control, but delegate out because uh, the project cannot be done by one person. Things spread out the work to your team members and trust them, then work as a team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lai. So I've been ask, uh, seeing a lot of questions on what makes a good project manager. Um, where can I get certifications for project management? And what, what are the different costs involved for all this? So if you do a simple Google online, there are many institutes of uh, higher learning and training providers that provide training certifications pathway to PMP certifications, project management. So that is what we are certified in. We have the P project management credentials. So you go through a form, formal 40 hours of training. And then after that, you submit your coursework and you attend your examination. So all this, if you need to find out more, you just uh, submit your inquiry through the, through the email that we shared at the end of this webinar. And we will address your or concerns uh, individually. So um, I have one uh, very interesting answer from here. So there's a fair big amount of technology being mentioned in this webinar, right? So this concern is, what if I'm a small business owner? What if I do not have a large um, deep pockets to afford all this technology? So if you were to go into the smart nation, Dot .govsg or you Google Smart Nation, inside there, there is a lot of government initiatives that are designed to help small business owners to adopt technology, right? 
many of them are heavily, heavily subsidized. So there are CTO as a service. So we have software as a service. We have lots of things as a service. We are, now they are even introducing chief technology officer as a service, which means they will assign a domain expert from the industry to help look at your business needs and to recommend uh, adaptation of technology that will meet your specific business need. Right. So um, is P I have another very, very interesting question. Is PMP certification relevant and only required if you are in a if you are not in a project management role? So like all certifications and training, it all depends on what kind of industry you are in and where you plan to go into. For many people, uh, Lai has shared his journey about an incidental project manager. He is trained in economics, he's trained in business administration. He's the last person that we will think of as a construction project manager, wearing a white hat, hard hat uh, in a construction site under the sun. But because of happenstance, it just happens. He was looking for a job and and one of the jobs that happens to be nearby, that's near him and is available, is in construction. So he adopted and went into it. And he found that uh, he picked up the skills and education as he goes along uh, on the job training. And the certifications and training pathways that he adopted actually um, helped him in his career. So for all of us, whether we are starting off in our career, or we are going through uh, mid-career decisions, or we are at the end stage career, we can always adopt an open mind and pick up lifelong learning, okay? We learn as we need, we train according to what we need or what interests us and our passion, because you never know how that skill or certifications will help you along that, that, that road. So let me see. So there is a question on mid-career. So if I want to go into mid-career, so that is a very, very specific question. You're saying I'm from a chemical engineering background, but I want to move into IT as a project manager. What are the main certifications that I should get into? in order to transit successfully. So um, that is talking about uh, changing of domain. It is not as uh, easy as what as simply getting a certification and you go into. We have to understand exactly what that domain calls for. And to see, because for many, especially IT so software implementation, they will not take in someone who may not have necessarily have the a domain expertise or they go in and able to start work immediately. But then again, certifications may give you that um, credibility, but the ability to showcase your past experiences and projects. Because we have to remember uh, what is the definition of a project. A project is something that is finite. There's a start, there's an end. Getting something built is a major project. Okay, say famous ones like the Changi Airport itself is a big, big, massive project that takes five to 20 years, depending on which terminal. Building a software, getting married itself is also a project. If you are planning your marriage, you know when you intend to get married, right? You already know what are your deliverables. You need to have your budget planning. You need to plan who are your stakeholders, who to invite for your wedding itself. So all this itself is a project. Having, um, having said all this, the certifications will give you that, um, the experiences and the necessary, um, the pathway, uh, how you should go, go through it on a systematic, systematic level. So, So there was a question, I, you said for the PMP certification 10 years ago, but did not 
uh, get through, which means, um, so how do you want to go? You would have to go through a revision because the education, the, <clears throat> the curriculum changes every three months, every three years. There, there's a very interesting question where it says, what would uh, having a certification benefit me in my job? So I, uh, let me share with you an example from myself. I received my PMP certifications uh, probably more than 11 years ago. So at that time, I was dealing with uh, engineering projects, never, never having done an IT project myself. So it's more like uh, what the person has asked. So I felt that I was ready to change into a different role. So I interviewed for a position for system integration, which is more of an IT project. So I was able to bring along and share examples of how I manage different projects in the engineering field. So with that, uh, the company was um, encouraged and it gave me the opportunity to, to come on board as a project management in the IT industry. So that is how that certification, and I attribute that uh, to a major part, the PMP certification. So job opportunities for after obtaining certification, if you were to go to any job board and you were to type in PMP, project management professional, which is what the certification is officially called, you will find hundreds and hundreds of jobs that says PMP required or PMP uh, preferred. So some of the industries that requires a mandatory PMP certifications will be like in banking, some some regulatory uh, roles. So those are actually mandatory. In construction, they prefer candidates who has PMP certifications because they acknowledge and recognize that people with such skills are able to deliver their projects in a more systematic manner. And of course, we don't forget the medical field, right? So where Vivian comes from, so perhaps uh, Vivian, you would like to share a little bit on how um, certifications is being valued, how the industry uh, look at the industry. Yeah, Paul. Okay, um, basically I think for the medical device industry, um, I, I would say that uh, there is a growing importance uh, or emphasis on uh, getting a, a PMP uh, certification. Uh, not so much of, uh, you know, uh, well, <laughs> I would say that uh, career um, expansion uh, and also uh, career, uh, what you call, uh, forward-looking career goals, okay, uh, part. Uh, I would say that uh, basically um, the man some of these management, uh, senior management team, they actually went through uh, the PMP course themselves and they are themselves uh, PMP certified. So uh, they... Uh, like what they see, okay, in terms of the training uh, that's been uh, actually put out, uh, you know, uh, the 40 hours training that uh, PA, uh, PAMI has actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, curated the curriculum, uh, you know, for, for uh, all the uh, interested uh, PMP uh, uh, potential pro uh, professionals. Okay, so um, basically, I think uh, they like what they see. They like the structure that's uh, uh, being rolled out for uh, what we call um, the industry. At least, you know, there's uh, some uh, kind of a governance framework, okay, that, uh, you know, the indus all industries, okay, not only medical device, all industries can actually tap onto. And uh, that is very important because in the past, when we do uh, project management, I think, um, you know, <laughs> uh, a decade ago when I do uh, project management, it's not that uh, prevalent as to, you know, oh, what are the steps, you know, what are the go governance structures that are in place and things like that. But right now, I think uh, with uh, the PMP certification, things are a little bit more clearer. That means in terms of the governance structures and in terms of uh, how, you know, uh, what, what should be the, uh, what I call the, um, the uh, con design control process, okay? That means uh, basically from initiation, you know, uh, you need to work out, you know, the planning uh, phase, you know, what are the things that you need to look out for and things like that. So, so all this uh, actually, of course, it varies from projects to projects, you know, uh, on how you want to uh, apply what you have learned in PMP. But the, the basic framework is available there, uh, available there for you to tap onto. So, uh, 
I, I would say that, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, go for your PMP certification and uh, you will be able to uh, see, um, you know, that uh, most of these uh, organizations, uh, senior management team knows what you're talking about. Uh, you know, you, you guys actually say, uh, are on the same page. Uh, when you actually do your projects, uh, you know, in this, comp uh, in this, especially the MNC companies. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Vivian, for the very detailed sharing. So there is a question. You may want to mute yourself. So there's a question. Where can you find all these uh, different training and accreditation pathways that we have been talking about? So uh, it's actually answered in the chat. You, if you just go into the SkillsFuture website and you just key in the keyword project management uh, professional or project management training, you have all the different possible courses and training providers listed inside. So let's see. From the experience, PNP Foundation, two other must-do courses to be an advanced practitioner. So what is the difference between what we have always been mentioning, agile project management and waterfall project management? So the traditional method of waterfall, this is what we call, is actually very structured. Simply put, it means every step must be done before you progress to the next step. So if you're at a planning phase, you will never go and immediately execute because you need a plan before you can execute the project. Whereas in an Agile, we are very, very adaptable as the name implies. We adopt the plan on the fly, we adopt the plan on the go, we will just execute and get it done. And if the plan doesn't work, it will be modified and adopted as we progresses. So that is the key differences for Agile and Waterfall. Yes? Sorry? Okay. Oh, okay. So we saw that someone has raised their hand. So if you do not mind, can you perhaps uh, type your question in, in the Q&A? Then we can see your questions. So how many sectors the, um, is project management able to be applied in? I would say project management can apply in almost every single sector from education, for academia, from finance, the engineering, the STEM, and definitely in construction. So it actually applies everywhere. So uh, there was a concern if you say, uh, I may be in an industry where I do not have much chance to do project management. So if you think about it, like I say, everything can be broken down into projects, whatever you are doing. And during your training, your instructors will guide you on how you can lock in your project hours. So that is not a, there's something that you do not have to worry about. So any new questions? You all see any critical questions that we should So do SP offer the course? That's an extremely good question. So um, for further education, we have something called the PACE, am I right? So I checked the PACE website. They do offer similar project management courses. So do uh, go to the website and go have a look, speak to an academic advisor or curriculum advisor over there. And of course, we should always support our alumni. I have attended some of their courses. They are actually one of the best adult education continuing courses in Singapore. How do you implement PMB tickets in your career after your PMB exam the first few years? Um, would you like to rephrase your question, um, Yamu? How do you implement PMP takeaway after the exam? I don't really un understand. Thank you. 
Thank you very much um, for all the, all the questions that are coming in. Um, we can see everybody is very, very keen and all, the, all about project management. How do I go about getting certifications and training? So if there is any specific questions that because of time we cannot answer online, send it in to us at, at the email that will be flashed on the screen very soon. And then we will get someone, either the panelists or someone from Singapore Polytechnic will address it. Uh, is PACE under SP? Yes, PACE is under SP, Singapore Polytechnic. What does it stand for? Polytechnic Academic Professional? Adult Continuous Education. Continuous Education, education yes. correct. Yeah. Thank you very much. So. We have now come to the end of the Q&A session as well as the end of the webinar. I would like to thank our alumni speakers and moderator as well as attendees for making time and I hope that everyone has benefited from today's insightful sharing. Do look out for upcoming webinars on 9, 16 and 23rd of November. You can sign up via the QR codes that will be flashed on the screen shortly. Write to span and sp.edu.sg for any queries that you may have regarding this webinar or anything else. Once again, thank you for your time. My name is Shafika and it was a pleasure being your MC for today. <laughs>